Hi everybody! Welcome to my channel. My name is Andrea C. I Heart Cross Stitch and thank you for joining me today. Today is Friday, November the 9th and this is my 32nd video. I have a lot to talk about today. I have a lot to share with you. So I'm just going to get right to it. This is my October 2018 update. Um, before I show my stitching for the month of October, I'd like to say a few things. First of all, I'd like to say welcome back to Lisa from Lisa's Stitching and Such. I missed her videos so much. You guys have no idea how much I missed her videos. And it's already starting to flash. I'm sorry about the lighting. Currently, right now, this is the room in the house that has the most light. Um, it's pretty dark in my living room and in the bedroom and everybody everywhere else is dark. This is the room that has the most light, so I'm just going to go with it. Anyhow, welcome back to Lisa. Also, I would like to say a special hello to one of my viewers, and her name is Tara. Now, Tara left a comment on my second video, and if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know that I am a big fa fan of the group Pentatonix. I have been since 2011. I have been a fan of that group for a very long time. And she reached out to me, uh, she left a comment, and she said something like, she was happy to find a fellow Pentatonix fan on, the, on Flosstube. And uh, she asked me if I was still a fan and if I was on, oh, and, you know, if, if uh, you know, like maybe one day we could talk about stitching and pentatonics. And uh, so I messaged her. I told her I was on Instagram and I gave her my Instagram name and she messaged me and then, and followed me and I followed her back and then I looked at her pictures. I went to her Instagram page and I looked at her pictures and I realized that I knew who I, I knew exactly who she was because we, you know, on Facebook, there are Facebook groups and there are Facebook groups for everything under the sun. And there are Facebook groups for the fans of Pentatonix. And she's been a member of those Facebook groups for a very long time. And so I recognized her. I recognized uh Anyhow, so I had a huge fangirl moment, fangirling over the fact that she was watching my videos, and she was fangirling over the fact that I was, that I knew who she was, because she enjoys watching my videos. Anyhow, we had a good old time talking about cross-stitching and pentatonics, and it was just a really, really awesome thing. I love this community, and how stitching just brings people together, and uh, so yeah. So I just want to say a special hello to Tara. Okay, I would also like to say a special hello to the following stitchers. The Rocking Stitcher, Crafting in Colorado, Forever in Stitches, Kissimmee Kim, uh, Terry, a friend of mine, her name is Terry, she lives in Utah. Wendy from Wending Stitches on Etsy, and if I can remember, I'll post a link to her Etsy shop below. And of course, Wendy, um, that we know from Floss Tube, Wendy Davis, uh, <laughs> Wendy, I'm sorry, Wendy, Cross Stitch Addict, maybe? I forgot your channel name, I'm sorry, but you all know Wendy. Anyhow, I would like to say a special hello to those ladies. Those ladies have a special place in my heart. A special place in my heart. So I just want to say hello to them. Okay. So, you ready to get into it? You ready to see what I have been working on? Because I'm really excited to show you. First, I'm going to get a drink. And yes, I brought flowers in a vase. And set it on a folding chair and a pillow. It's sitting on a folding chair and a pillow so that you all can see it while I'm talking. And I still haven't done anything with my my boys' closet. Whatever. Okay. Alright, so I have a finish. Would you like to see it? A 
Okay. I finished Pink Peonies, and I have ironed this fabric, I don't know how many times, and it seems like I just can't get the wrinkles out. That's annoying. Anyhow, I'm going to hold this up and talk for a little while, and hopefully my arms won't get tired, and hopefully this will be my thumbnail. <laughs> Alright, so this piece it, uh, is, was, is a secret stitch for a stitcher that watches my videos. I haven't said who it is for yet, but that is about to change. This is Pink Peonies by Ellen Mauer Stroh. Okay, let me go a little closer so you can see it. All right, are you guys ready to see, to hear who this is for? Oh, my arms are starting to get tired. Ooh, okay. Now, I'm going to say who this is for. But please don't go on to Instagram and send her a message and tell her anything about this. Because I want her to see this. I want her to know about this prize when she watches this video. So please don't go on to Instagram or Facebook or anything and say and congratulate her or, or give away the surprise. Okay? So, I stitched this. I'm going to have to put my arms down. Okay, I'll just hold it up like that. I stitched this. You know her on Instagram. Oh, hold on. There's a piece of hair. You know her on Instagram. And you know her here on Floss Tube. She's not a Floss Tube maker. She doesn't create videos, but she comments on a lot of people's videos. And she is on Instagram. I'm not going to say her name because I want to respect her privacy, but her Instagram name and the name that she goes by here on FlossTube is Quail Hollow 7 Yes, that's right. I stitched this for you. Quail Hollow 7 she did something for me this year. I've never met her in person. I've never spoken to her on the phone. We have never Skyped or have had any verbal contact. We have messaged through um, Instagram. And, uh, but she did something for me this year she was incredibly, incredibly generous. And she allowed me to do something that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And I, I felt compelled to do something nice for her in return. And so I stitched this for you. I stitched this for you. I'm not going to say your name, but, uh, so this is for Quail Hollow 7. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A million thank yous is not enough. Hopefully this will be a little, this is just a tiny little piece of, of how thankful I am. Okay, I'm gonna put it down now because my arms are hurting. But Quail Hollow 7, this is for you. Um, please contact me through Instagram because I really don't know how you want this finished in your home. Um, I only know how to frame things. I don't know how to turn any uh, things into a pillow or a cushion or anything else, although I'm sure I can figure it out. But uh, anyhow, contact me and we'll go over the details. Okay? So there is that. And I wanted to talk about the only thing change I made in that design is, okay, let's see, let's see if I can show it to you. Okay, do you see the dark, the dark parts of the leaves? 
I had to change the I had to change it to the darkest green I could find, which I believe was 934. Um, the green that they called for, the green that was called for, sorry about that. The green that was called for uh, was nine. I'm sorry, 895. Um, that was the darkest green that this pattern called for, and it it matched too closely to a different green, and you really couldn't tell the difference. So I needed a darker green so that you could see the, uh, you know, the, the lines in the leaves. See these dark green lines? Those were not coming up. See here? Those were not coming up with the other green. So I substituted out. I believe it was 934. Okay, so there's that. Sorry about the lighting. Okay, so what else did I work on? I did work a little bit on my um, Strawberry Fields Forever. Uh, the, I stitch on this at the library when I go. And here's what it will look like when it's finished. And here's my progress so far. So I worked, oh, uh, what did I do? This area right here worked on this area right here. I didn't, I wasn't at the library for as long as I normally am. Um, I, I forgot what I, I had something going on that day. I don't remember what it was. But I, I was only just able to stay for a little bit. So I was, a, I got the, oh, you know what? Oh, I don't remember. I thought I, I had a thought, but then I had a different thought that just erased the first thought. <laughs> All right. Sorry about the lighting. Whenever I reach over, it just messes up. Okay. So there's that. All right. So the next thing I want to show you, the next thing I want to show you is a project that I worked on called Mom's Cooking. Now, this was a design works kit that I got from Joann's. I believe I got it at the end of 2016. And I was really drawn to the colors, the reds, the greens, and the blues in this design. Also, um, it just it just reminded me of my childhood growing up in Indiana with lots of family around and cooking and I, I just love this. This is very a very nostalgic piece for me. And so I worked on that a little bit in the month of October. Um, it did come with a, four, a piece of 14 count Ada and it came with floss. I substituted out the Ada for a 32 count, a piece of 32 count linen. And I'm also using um, DMC floss instead of the kit floss. And so here's where I got to so far. So I, I was able to do this. Hold on, there's a piece of fuzz. This and all of this, and starting in the um, the rolling pin. So I'm really happy. I I just love the reds and the greens that I have so far. It's a it, it might look a little bit old fashioned. I don't care. Um, the the design did call to have a whole bunch of French knots all, all around there, like in French knots in her hat and all in this apron thing. I didn't do that. I did put a French knot here, two of them here and one here. And uh, some French knots up here for the salt shaker to, you know, show where the, the holes are in the salt shaker. So there is my progress on mom's cooking, and I really like it. All right. So there is that. Sorry. Sorry for the light. Okay, so I'm really excited to talk about my next project. It is a realist kit. 
I got this. I got what? When did I get this? Oh, I remember. I got this back in June when I when I had my um, my babysitting job, and I I did a the 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 mom of the the family went to Miami for a whole week, and I babysat her kids for a whole week, and I decided to treat myself to a little something, and I got this. I don't know how to correctly pronounce the name of this castle. I'm going to say it's New Schweinstein Castle, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the correct pronunciation, but it's beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about this project because I don't, I don't think I've gone into depth, I don't think I've gone in depth into this project yet. So I'm gonna do that now. All right. Okay, so the kit, the chart is a color chart. There's a little piece of it. Okay, as you can see, definitely a color chart. Um, it comes with instructions in Russian, English, Dutch, French, Spanish, and Italian. Okay. And give me one second. Sorry about the pausing. Okay. Let me get this out. So the chart. I should have been more prepared. Okay. The chart comes with a key. This is a copy. This isn't the actual key itself. I made a, a photocopy and I, I made these little marks to indicate when there is one, when one, only one strand of, of floss is used. I made little marks just to remind myself so I don't accidentally use two instead. But there's the, the key. Um, it, there are some columns. The first column is the symbol. The second column indicates how many lengths of floss are used, or I believe. See, here's two, two strands and one strand. Here's back stitch. Okay. Actually, the second, the second column indicates the type of stitch and also how many are used, how many strands of floss are used. The third column is the number, corresponds to the number on the floss card. So for instance, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, they're all on this floss card, as you can see the numbers. Some of them, some of them are blended, like here you would blend 8 and 9, 3 and 4, and then this column says how many strands of floss are used. Okay, so here are the colors in this kit. Second, the second floss card, definitely one of my favorites. We'll be up to 16. We got the greens. More greens and into the blues and pinks. And here. And this is where I put so this leftover area is where I put the uh, the blended floss. Okay, so here are the color. Here's the color scheme. And this is a wool acrylic blend. So this is not cotton floss. 
It's a wool acrylic blend. And I will tell you that I am allergic to wool. And I have noticed only one way that this affects me. And that is, normally, yes, I'm a floss licker. I cannot be a floss licker with this. I tried it, I, like when I first started this, this project, I, try, I did the floss licking thing, and I did it maybe like two or three times, and then my, my lip, my bottom, well, both of my top lip and my bottom lip, but mostly my bottom lip started to like tingle, and it was like really uncomfortable feeling, and the next day, the skin started to peel off of my lips, and I kind of like had a sore, like a blister sore on the bottom of my lip over here. So, and, and uh, you know, this is pretty thick floss. It, it, I would say it's equivalent to one and a half strands of DMC. It's, it's not the equivalent of two strands of DMC, but I would say one and a half. And uh, so you need a pretty, you need a, a needle with a good size eye to stitch with this properly. Um, and I, so I began using a needle threader and that made a huge difference. Now, I should have brought a needle with me, but I didn't. So I'm gonna have to try and explain this as best as I can. You know what, let me show you first the progress that I've made. So here we are so far. I started in the middle, which is like right in, around in this area. And I came down and I worked my way over. And then I worked my way down. So this is the fabric that came in the kit. It's a very big piece of fabric. Uh, I wanted to start in the middle because I wasn't sure how much space I was going to have between the edge of the design and the end of the fabric. It ends up being two inches. Um, ideally, I usually like to have a three inch margin here, but two inches is, is okay. So, um, so I'll probably just continue to work my way down and over and eventually I'll go work my way up. Um, so I wanted to stitch this, but decrease the amount of, uh, I did, I wanted to make it less, how can I explain this? I didn't want my, the, the, the floss to shred, um, because it's thicker floss, so using a bigger needle, I used a 24, size 24 needle with this. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I used a 20. I'm pretty sure it was a 24 needle. And so that was big enough to open up the hole of the, the Ada to allow the thread to go through well without any kind of, of friction between the floss and the fabric. So the less friction, the less the thread shreds. And I remember when I was talking, not my last video, but the one before, when I was talking about my lighthouse project and how I had to use four strands of floss on an 18 count Ada and how I really didn't care for that. And I believe it was either in the, the comments in that video, I, I, don't, I don't exactly know how, where I, read this idea. I know I either heard it or read about it somewhere, but I don't remember where, so I, I can't really give credit to anybody. Oh. But it's, um, I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably like freaking people out. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to fix that really quick. Okay. There. All is well. All is well. See? It's not that bad. <laughs> okay. So, 
I'm just going to get to the, I, I'm like, okay, so what I do is this. I'm just going to get, what, okay, let me see. How can I show you? See, I wanted to have a needle with me so that I could show you exactly what I'm talking about. And let me just do this. Let me just do this. Okay. All right. So here I have one strand of floss, right? And let's say the pattern calls for this color, but to use two strands of floss. Now, if I use the loop method, okay, so my needle's here. I would thread my needle and it's hanging like this, okay? So pretend my needle's right here and it's, the needle is threaded and I do the loop method, I'm stitching and I have this tail hanging. So for a little bit, we have four strands going through the holes. This I did not want. So what I did was I threaded, I threaded the needle and I brought the needle up to here. Okay. And then I took so the needle is right here. Pretend there's a needle right here, okay? So I would take the needle, I would take my hands and I would pinch where the, the eye of the needle and the thread meet. I would go through this hoop, this loop, and I would pull the thread through and it would, okay, it would make this little knot. And my needle would be right here and this is where I would stitch. So, so <clears throat> this is at the back. Okay, so you, I would just capture it at the back and stitch over it. All right, and doing that really, really, really was very helpful. It allowed me to use longer strands of floss, and it really cut down on the the amount of shredding. So if you are, are ever stitching a realist kit, keep that in mind. Now, obviously that did not work when I had to use just one strand. When I just used one strand, I did it the normal way. But when I used two strands of floss of the same color, I would do the loop method, but, I, but the loop would be at the eye of the needle, and I would, like I did, like I just demonstrated to you, I would loop it through so that there was a knot at the eye of the thread and I would stitch that way and it worked perfectly. So there is that. I absolutely love this project. Um, I cannot, I can't, I can't even, I can't even tell you how much I love this. The, you see this? The texture, the, using the blended floss adds so much texture to the buildings. See this in here? The highlights in here is blended floss, you know, bl blended um, floss colors. See in here? That's just one strand of floss. So it gives it a dimension. I just love this. Oops. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so if you, if you have any questions about uh, this kit or anything else, just let me know. I will do my best to answer you. Okay, let me move all of my stuff over. If, if, if I only had, let's just say, if, okay, if I could only stitch Mirabilia's and realists and other Russian kits for the rest of my life, I would be fine. Um, I really love realists' kits. There are a lot of other Russian and Ukrainian kits, kit makers out there that I really want to try. Dimensions is okay too, but I think that the quality of their fabric and floss is not on par with the, the Eastern European kits. Okay. 
And that's it. That's all that I worked on in the month of October. Oh, excuse me. It's probably the wool. Okay. So I just wanted to show you a few things that I have acquired. Just two things that I acquired last month. The first one is this. Now, it's a pair of scissors. Now, I, I had all of the, the scissors that I had prior to this were like cheap scissors that you get at Michael's, you know, the regular DMC scissors, and they're fine. They cut the threads and they're fine and they're useful and uh, they do the job. Um, I have been wanting a really good, high quality pair of scissors for a long time. And I got in the mail a flyer from Joann's with a 60% coupon. And uh, I was going through the mail and I saw it and I put it in the trash pile. And because, you know, I was going through the mail and making a pile of stuff to keep, stuff to throw away. And my husband said, why are you throwing away that Joanne's mailer? I was like, I'm not going to get anything. And he, and he said, there's a 60% off coupon. Why don't you get yourself something? And I was like, no, you know, we don't really have the money for that. And he was like, go get yourself something. Go get yourself something. And I was like, mm -hmm. but he was insistent and I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to argue with them. So I went to the Joann's website and I was like, I wonder if they have like scissors, but not the DMC brand, like special, you know, good quality scissors. So I went to the website and they do. As a matter of fact, the Joann's website has really good quality cross stitch fabric. They have Zweigart fabric. Um, vintage Country Mocha and a whole bunch of other really good high quality linens at very good prices, big pieces, little pieces. So if you're, you know, if you have a 60% coupon and you want some good fabric, go to Joann's. Maybe you could use your 60% coupon and or 50%, 40%, whatever, and get yourself a good piece of fabric. Anyhow. So I found these, these are Ginger scissors. I got them, they, I forgot how much they were, but I got them for a very good price. Very good price. And they're the curved kind. And I love them. I, and they came with this leather sheath that they sit in. And I cannot tell you how much I love these. I really do. They're very, they have a nice weight to them. I love that they're curved because when I'm stitching, for example, I'll use this for example, when I'm stitching and I need to tie off something at the end. So you don't have anything poking out? No, I don't. Anyhow, when I'm stitching and I think, I want to say I just, see the, the scissors just lay, oh here's the little piece. I don't think I want to cut that off. Um, the scissors just lay right on the top of the fabric and you just snip. I love that they're curved. Love that they're curved. Very helpful. They make, I'm sorry about the lighting. So if you have a 60% Joann's coupon, get yourself a pair of scissors. They have regular, they have these in the regular straight scissors and they have the curved kind. I really like the curved kind. Anyhow, okay, enough of the scissors. All right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about. Okay. Before I show this next thing, I just want to thank everybody who left comments in my previous video. Um, thank you so much for all of the kind words all of the encouragement, all of the support, and the comments that you left. Thank you is just not sufficient, but I don't have any other words other than thank you. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you so much for everything that you said in the comments. For everyone who left comments, thank you so much. Okay. 
one of the, okay, I have to go back. I'm gonna pause the video for a second. Am I recording it? Okay. So I would say maybe a year, a year and a half ago, probably a year and a half ago, a viewer of mine who lives close to me um, contacted me when I expressed dismay that Spring Queen was out of print. Do you remember that? Remember when I found out that Spring Queen was out of print and I was very upset because of all of the seasonal queens of Mirabilia, that's the one that was my favorite. And I had wanted to stitch that for a very long time. And my friend, she's my friend, um, I'm not sure if she wants her name said, I'll just call her C. C contacted me and she said, I have Spring Queen. Um, you know, maybe we can meet sometime or whatever. So we met at a local restaurant and I bought Spring Queen from her. And that was great. So fast forward to current times. Um, she contacted me and she offered to get me the fabric for Spring Queen if I would sell Spring Queen back to her when I was done stitching her. And I said, absolutely not. I will not sell it back to you, but I will gladly give it to you. You're offering to get me the fabric to stitch it on. There's no way I'm going to sell it back to you. You can have it back when I'm done stitching on it. And so that's what happened. Um, she got me the fabric for Spring Queen, and when I'm done stitching on it, I will give it back to her. Um, she can do whatever she wants with it. She can stitch Spring Queen. She can sell it. I don't, I don't care. She got me the fabric so I can stitch it, and that's what I'm going to show you now. It is a beautiful fabric from Color and Cotton. Look at that, and that is true to life. Look at that beautiful blue. I'm going to take it out of the sleeve. She, Spring Queen only calls for a, what is it? What's half quarter? Fat quarter? And my wonderful friend C got me a fat half. Y'all, a fat half. This is, I can stitch two mirrors on this. Look at this. Oh my gosh, I, I was just overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Oh man, this beautiful blue. You guys, the, if you need a beautiful I wouldn't, I would say it's a little bit darker than a sky blue, but if you're looking for a beautiful blue fabric, this is one of the most gorgeous pieces of fabric I've ever seen in my life. It's a beautiful, it's like a light blue and a medium blue model together. There, there, there aren't any pieces of white. I would say it's, it's a mixture of a light blue and a medium blue. And Spring Queen is going to look fantastic on this and and whatever else I stitch on it because I can stitch two mirrors on this. See, I we got together um, last week, last weekend, last weekend, yeah, last weekend, and we we stitched for a while, and she gave this to me, and I thanked her. But, you know, just, I wish there was another way, I wish there was other than thank you. Because that's what we have in the English vocabulary. We have thank you, but it just doesn't seem enough. We need to come up with another word to express thank you. Sorry, I'm putting my hands up to stop the flashing. 
We need to find a way to say thank you. That means more than just thank you. Because that's how I'm feeling. That's how I feel with, with Quail Hollow 7 and her generosity and all of you and all of the generosity that you've given me in the comments and and C's generosity. <sighs> Putting my hand up, stop the flashing. Just thank you all. The, the friendships that I have made on FlossTube is why I keep making videos. Like I said in my previous video, I don't do this for me. I do this for all of you who enjoy watching me talk about cross-stitch and sometimes a little bit of my life. I'm able, if I'm able to make you happy and in return receive a little bit of your friendship, that is, I will, I will keep doing this forever. Okay. Alright. There's one more thing I want to talk to you guys about. Now, do you remember back in December of I'm so sorry about the flashing, y'all. I'm losing the light, and I don't feel like getting up. Okay. Do you remember back in December of 2015? So those of you who've been with me for a long time, in December of 2015, I started Heaven and Earth Designs Stitchers Retreat. And I stopped working on that project because it was like 70 something pages long and it was a tremendous amount of gray which really brought down my mental state and my mood. I learned from stitching on that project that I cannot do, I, that, that I am emotionally and mentally affected by color. I cannot stitch on projects with huge amounts of gray. It just brings my mood down big time. And so I stopped that project. But uh, it called for a full yard of fabric. And I had only stitched a, a tiny, tiny little bit, a tiny little piece in the top left hand corner. And so I had a whole lot of fabric left, okay? So excuse the noise. Okay. And I cut it up into pieces, and I have this piece of fabric. It is, it's 18 count Ada, and it's in this green color, okay? It's called Cel Celadon Green. I would say it's a little bit darker than Sage, okay? So I have this piece of fabric. Um, okay, so there's this. Earlier in the year, I would probably say um, maybe in April. I got the fabric that I needed. Was it April? No, it must have been earlier than that. I got the fabric that I needed for this project. It is mini farewell to anger, and I'm going to try and angle it to reduce the glare, okay? So. If you remember, I got this project last year at the, the Thanksgiving, the, what's it called, Black Friday, the Heaven and Earth Designs, I believe they had a Black Friday sale. I got this at a very good price. I think it was like half off. And it's a mini, so I think it was like, what, $6? And it this was going to be one of my starts this year. If you remember from last year, when, when I posted the video for my 2008 stitching plans, I said that I wanted that to be one of my starts for this year. But, you know, plans changed and things happened, and it's not going to be one of my starts for this year. I would really like it to be my January 1st New Year New Start. Because this is called Farewell to Anger, January 1st. New year, new start, farewell to anger, farewell to 2018, and all that happened this year. It's been a rough year. I would really like for farewell to anger to be a, a symbolic start 
for me on New Year's Day. And I would like to... My plan is to stitch it on this green. So do you think that this would look good on this green? That's why my question to all of you. Let me see if I can move that. There we go. All right, so... Because I really don't want to buy... You know, I don't want to buy a piece of a new piece of fabric for this, and I really, that's just not in the budget right now to buy a piece of fabric that's that's big enough. Because I already have, like, why buy fabric for this piece when I already have a piece of fabric that I could easily stitch on it? But I want to know what you think. Do you think that this project would look good on this green fabric? Now, I know it's full coverage, and a lot of the fabric is going to be covered, but you know, the, the side edges that's going to go between the the frame and the, the piece itself. You know, this fabric is going to be showing. So what do you think? I'd really like to know your opinion. Hey, I think that's it for stitching. That's it for stitching. Okay, so if you are here for the stitching, that is it. And... Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time. If you are watching the rest of this, then I'm going to assume that you're interested in my life updates and that we're friends. Because really, only my friends are inter interested in my life updates, right? But first, a drink of water. Okay. First of all, What's today, Friday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday morning. 6.50, 6.45 in the morning. My son leaves the house to go to school. And he comes back inside like 30 seconds later and says, Mom, there's a dog outside. A little tiny dog running around with no leash and no person around. And I was like, what? So I go downstairs because I live on the second floor of a condo building. And there was this little tiny dog running around barking, and it was a Yorkie dog. She was so cute. She was so tiny and so cute and so scared, and she was barking, and you could tell she was scared. And so I got her and brought her inside the house um, and got a towel because she was wet, because the sprinklers were on outside, which means I got wet, so I had to change my, I was in my pajamas, okay? It's, it's not even seven o'clock in the morning. I was in my pajamas, so I had to get myself dressed. And so I put her in the bathtub, I got myself dressed, I wrapped her up in a towel, I woke up my, oh my gosh, my little one was sleeping. And I woke him up and I said, Brandon, wake up, there's a dog in the bathroom. <laughs> and he woke up and he was like, what? A dog in the bathroom? Okay, he has been wanting a dog forever. Forever. He is constantly asking us for a dog. My oldest is allergic to dogs. I know we could get a hypoallergenic dog. They're very expensive. So, you know, we just, we need to get ourselves in a better financial standing before we can even begin to think about taking care of an animal. Um, Anyhow, so, so he got up, and so we wrapped the dog up in a towel, and I held her, and I was walking around the neighborhood trying to find somebody who was, like, walking around the neighborhood calling out for her, or driving around calling out for her, okay? And so I walked around the neighborhood, and I didn't, I couldn't find anybody that appeared to be looking for a lost dog, and it was time to get my little one ready for school. So we came back up inside the house, and I got him ready for school, and I was looking at the tags on her collar. And there was a tag, but it was very old, and it was very hard to make out the numbers, the phone number on it. Um, so I had to, and she was moving around, well, it was difficult. Let's just say it was difficult, not only deciphering the numbers on the tag, but getting the dog to stay still long enough so that I could see the numbers on the tag. So eventually, I, you know, I was able to call, and the, the man answered the phone, and 
I confirmed, you know, I asked him where he lived. He said the name of our community. And I said, I asked him what the dog's name was. And he said the name that was on the tag. I didn't want to give, hand her over to some random stranger. And so it was an older man who lives in the building across from me. So I told him that I was going to be taking my son to school and that I would bring the dog out, you know, to give him back, him back the dog. So, sorry about the flashing guys. So I brought, um, I brought her out and she was so excited. She was so excited. It was sad though. My, my little one in the brief time that she was here, my little one got so attached to her. Her name was Dot. Okay. Little tiny dog. Her name was Dot. Adorable. And so my son, my little one was really sad because he didn't want to give her back. And I was like, I was like, what, 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 how would you feel if you ever got lost and another family found you and decided to keep you? How would you feel? And he was like, I wouldn't like that. It's like, that's why we had to give Dot back. And so anyhow, the next day the man called me and he said he wanted to give me something for taking care of Dot and, you know, giving him, giving her back. And I was like, you don't have to do anything. It was my pleasure. She's such a nice dog. And he was like, no, no, I want to do something. I want to do something. So I was like, fine, fine, whatever. So this morning I got a knock on the door and he brought me this. <laughs> he brought me a huge bottle of wine now. I have a bottle of wine that has been in my refrigerator since 20, since 2008. No kidding. I've had an unopened bottle of wine in my refrigerator for 10 years. That is how often I drink wine. And he, he comes and gives me this. I don't even know. Is this a, is this a good wine? White Zinfandel, Setter Home. Is this a good wine? Is this going to give me a headache? Is this going to make me sick? I don't know. But holy cow, this huge one and a half liters of wine. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. Oh, it says medium sweet. Hmm. Okay, so I thought I'd share that funny little story, and we'll see how long it takes us to drink this wine. The last time I drank wine, I got very, very sick because I don't have a gallbladder. I had, I had my gallbladder removed in 1998, so I think I was 25, 24. 24 or 25 when I got my gallbladder removed. So I have to be really careful with alcohol. And uh, like I said, last time I drank wine, I got sick. Okay. What else? Do I, okay. So life updates. <sighs> my son, my teenage son got a job. Very first job. He's never had a job before. Very first job. He got a job at Panera Bread. Um, I don't know if Panera is a U.S. chain only, or if there are Paneras across the world. I really don't know how that works. But it's kind of like um, it's called a restaurant, I believe, that the designation would be called Fast Casual. Um, for those of you in America, you know what Panera is. For those of you outside the U.S., you go and you order food and they give you a buzzer thing and you go get your food when the buzzer buzzes and it's real it's good food it's soup salad sandwiches they, they bake their own breads there and they're they try and serve very healthy food um, so he's working there so he's really excited about that um, my husband got a new job I'm not gonna say the name of the company that he works for uh, but he, he's no longer working at the, his previous job, the job that he got hurt at. He's not working there anymore. He got a new job at a different company, 
and he is so excited, and I'm really happy for him. Um, if you want to know the name of the company, um, you'll have to private message me because I'm not going to say the name of the company on social media. Uh, but he's thrilled. He is so happy. He's like, this is where I want to stay until I retire. Um, for me, things are going well. Um, I'm, I still have an iron issue. I, I had blood work done in September and I got the results back and I was really surprised to know that I still have an iron issue. I thought that that would have been resolved with the medicine that I'm taking, but apparently not. So I'm looking into some other avenues about that. Um, um, okay, so in my last video, I talked about mental health issues that I was having in a previous video. And I'll just say that it's not a good idea to stop taking your mental health medicine unless you talk to your doctor. <laughs> because that's what I did. Um, hmm. I would say about two months ago, two and a half months ago, I decided to stop taking my mental health medicine. And being off of it for a while really was not very good. It was not a good idea, which attributed to what occurred on what? Video 30? 30. One. 30. Yeah. Video number 30, when I had the, the anxiety panic attack thing, I had, I had been off of my medicine for a long time when I recorded that video. And the last video that I've recorded, um, I don't think that I had been back on my meds then either. I am now. Um, I've been back on them for a couple of weeks now, and I feel a lot better. It was a mistake of me to stop taking them. So there's that. Um, and I think that's it. So thank you so much for watching. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't know what I'm forgetting. But thank you for watching. Thank you so much for commenting. And thank you for being my friends. And listening to me talk about stitching and life stuff. You have no idea how much it means to me. For real. Alright, well I will talk to you all later and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.